Hey, it's Chag. I'm going to do an experiment I first uh, learned when I was a kid in grade school in science class. And I've seen this on YouTube before. I'm not saying this is anything new. It just sort of is, is really interesting. So we're here in the great bald prairies of Western Canada. Today, it's minus 40. The, the high, I think, is going to be minus 33. Overnight tonight, it's going to go down to minus 50. With the wind chill, it will be about minus 62 to minus 65. That's just absolutely insane. Uh, we usually, around January, get a cold snap somewhere in the uh, close to minus 28, minus 29, maybe up to minus 35, uh, with wind chills up to maybe minus 37. Uh, but it hasn't been this cold since 1972, they say. And uh, I was around then, I remember that day too. When it gets this cold, you can take a pot of boiling water and you can throw it into the air and the water, when it disperses, that boiling water freezes instantly. Uh, it, it really looks cool. So that's what I'm doing right now and it's getting too cold for me to hang out out here. So I'm gonna go get the pot and I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna go inside to the studio and I'm gonna uh, continue with the update. I'm back with the boiling water. I'm taking one shot at this. It's crazy cold. Oh, that's so cool. I don't know if that camera's catching it, but that cloud is climbing up there. As I was bringing the pot out, some of the water was sloshing over. And it was really cool as the drops would go over and start to fall to the ground. Just before they hit the ground, you'd hear a little crack. It would just, it would freeze just before it hit the ground. And then you would hear it on the ground, just go tick, 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 and, and scatter away on the other ice. So I'm going inside. I don't know how well my iPhone's going to pick this up, but you can see all of the frost on that stand. Uh, hopefully my cameras are okay. There doesn't seem to be frost on them. Uh, the cameras were outside for no more than 10 minutes. And literally, uh, carrying uh, this one in, uh, I initially had my, my glove off when I grabbed it, and I could feel that burning. Um, so right away put my glove on because I don't need frostbite or a hand frozen to a, a stand, which... Uh, Around here, that's the thing that happens a lot. Kids used to go and see the frost on the on the metal fences, and they would they would lick the frost, and their tongue would liter literally freeze uh, to the to to the fence. I've witnessed that a couple of times. So that's uh, crazy cold out there. Um, hopefully, this will break soon. Looks like we're going to have uh, a few days uh, of it. What really kind of makes it worse is until about a week and a half ago we were around two degrees, one degree, you know, maybe down to minus five overnight. And that's not usual for here too. Usually we're, we kind of get into about the minus 15s, you know, around the middle or end of November. And we sort of stay there through December. This cold snap coming on so fast really made the cold a, a lot more obvious and it's a lot more uh, brutal. So anyway, like the title says, this is sort of my, this is my January 2024 uh, update. Um, I haven't put anything up since I finished the uh, uh, GGBO build uh, at the end of November. I think that was probably around the, the 29th or 30th of November. Uh, I put that up and I, I said I was going to kind of take a couple weeks off and, and it ended up being till now. Uh, we're kind of more or less in the middle of January. It was about the 13th, I think, of January uh, today. Um, I just really needed to take some time off. If you've been following my channel, you know we've had some challenges. Uh, uh, we've, we've had two deaths uh, in our immediate family uh, this year. One was kind of sudden and the other one was very sudden. Uh, I'm not going to go into that, but uh, uh, the, the thing about 
grief and, and, and depression is even doing something you love like this YouTube channel, you kind of, until you get going, you're kind of like, eh, I don't really want to do that right now. And so I won't, uh, once you get started doing it, you find that it's really good therapy. Over Christmas, I was lucky enough to take almost three weeks off and just do whatever I wanted. Um, and so I kind of really jumped in on uh, really kind of working on my, my video chops, my editing chops, the audio, all, all of that. Um, I, I like doing the YouTube uh, videos, but I've just kind of been throwing them together and throwing them out. And I looked at a bunch of my, my videos and I, I kind of cringe. You know, they don't look so great. And even the audio is not so good, which is really bad for me because that's my thing. My minor was performance. My major was uh, audio recording and engineering. And you can't tell by most of my videos. So I've been spending time over the last few weeks kind of working on seeing what I can do to, to make my videos look better, look cleaner, look more interesting. Obviously, I've, got, I've been working with lighting in here. I'm not going to do this when I work in the, in the wood shop or the electronic shop. But here in the studio, this is kind of, this is the creative space. Um, where uh, I, I think it makes sense to, you know, maybe work with some lighting, work with your background, my, my wall of shame back there of amplifiers. Uh, looking at all of those in this, um, there's only two in there uh, that I didn't build. And even those two, uh, the, the, where is it right there? Uh, the high watt and the VVT amp, uh, those have been modified by me. Everything else back there is me. And uh, let me know, you know, if you're interested in, in these amps behind me and what are they about and, and uh, what makes them different, let me know. I'll do a video on that. The red Trinity Amps Triwatt there and the, the Trinity Amps Custom Plexi. This is hard to do. Custom Plexi right there. Um, those are uh, my 2021 and 2022 winter builds. So I already have video series on those up there. And I've done a few things on my, um, uh, my Jagsters, which are right over here. Got that one right. Every Christmas I, I do buy myself something and I got a new camera this year. So I'm really excited about that. I'm, I'm not filming with it. I'm actually filming this on my MacBook Pro, uh, my M2 MacBook Pro. Um, I'm actually quite surprised that it, it doesn't look too bad. Um, I used to try and shoot on my older MacBook Pro and, and it, it never looked good. Uh, but I just wanted to do this as a quick update and really fast and I'm, I'm, kind, of, I'm kind of liking the way that looks. Uh, the videos that I shot outside, the one where I'm, I'm kind of straight on and you can see the, the house behind us, uh, that was shot on my new camera which is a ZV-E10. Uh, so I, I've been really happy with this. I, I got the, the ZV-E10 uh, with the kit lens, but I haven't used the kit lens at all. This is a Sigma 16mm uh, f1.4. This is an amazing lens. This lens looks so good. Um, uh, so uh, I like that camera a lot. And my, my other sort of Cam my, my main cameras, the cameras I've been using, uh, my ZV-1 was my first sort of really, really kind of good camera. Um, I use that one a lot. It, I've always used it in the studio here uh, and in the uh, electronic shop. I like the way it looks there. But um, in, in the wood shop, uh, I've been using the ZV-1 my, as my B cam because I really like the way my other cam looks. I'll, I'll get it too. I don't know why... A thumbs up just came up. I don't know why. So the other uh, camera that I have, and this is the one that I use for my main camera in the wood shop, although I'll be using the ZV-E10 now. Uh, this is a Canon uh, EOS 250D, or in the States, it's called the Rebel SL3. Entry level, um, it, it works really quite well as long as you've got good lighting. I've got a pancake lens on here. Uh, it's a, a 24 millimeter um, f2.8 I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 24 millimeter f2.8. So this one now, I, I do like the way this one does photos. So I'll probably be using this one for any sort of photography and still images and things like that but I'm probably not going to film with this much anymore. One of the reasons I got the ZV-E10 was uh, trying to match the cameras. You, you really can't, it, it's really difficult, especially for somebody who doesn't um, 
is a neophyte like me and doesn't know this stuff too well, it's really hard to match uh, a Canon and a Sony, for example. Whereas the ZV-1 and the ZV-10 are pretty close to each other to start with. And, and I want to be able to match those things, especially, like I say, in the studio here, uh, doing things. And we also, we do stuff for One Soul Thrust. And I want that to have a, a, a certain kind of a look. So uh, I'm really happy with that. And uh, for audio, um, this isn't really so much a, a, a gear video, but I do want to say that these Comica Boom XD um, wireless systems are just amazing. I'm, I'm using one right now. This is the other transmitter, and uh, the receiver is on top of the ZVE-10, um, which one of the reasons I like these is the transmitters have a built-in recorder. So I'm recording this using one of these, but it's it's just going to the internal recording, and then I'll sync it up with this video. So a little bit of gear stuff there. I'm also going to work on trying to structure my videos. Every single video I've done, I have never planned it out. It's just off the cuff. I just turn the cameras on, and I start doing my things, and I talk to the camera when I think of it. And, uh, you know, then I go and edit that after. But I, I often end up with, you know, four or five hours. I try and edit that down to, to 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I've had a few that were a little longer than that in the last year. Uh, but if you, if you watch my, my first series of the, uh, the Trinity Amps Triwatt, and even when I was doing the uh, Custom Plexi, I had some videos there that were an hour or more, and I don't think people watch that for that long. And there's a lot of stuff that, like I say, I watch them and I cringe not only because of the way they look and the audio, but how much redundant information is in there uh, and, and how you can tune out watching that stuff. One thing I do think I do pretty well is edit things together that way. And then again, that's my background uh, as an audio engineer and, and producer is, is taking what's good putting it there and putting this stuff you don't need, leaving it out. I've kind of been able to now apply that to my YouTube videos uh, where I really kind of go, no, that doesn't need to be there um, and still get everything across. So like I say, you know, you take a, a three or four hour session of working in the shop, for example, and you cut that down to 20 minutes. It's still interesting, but I also know that it has to look good, it has to sound good, and it has to... Um, it has to be concise and present good information. And that's what I started saying a little while ago is none of my videos have been planned before. They're just all off the cuff and then I cut together to make whatever works. And um, I'm, I'm going to try not doing that. I'm probably not going to script out my videos, but I am going to kind of um, storyboard them. Uh, you know, kind of get... Um, there's balloons going up here too. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this. I don't know if that's on the footage or not, so I'll cut this if it's not. But if it's there, I'm not doing that. I don't know why it's coming up. What was I saying? Oh, so I probably won't script out my videos, but I am going to kind of storyboard them. I don't ever really write things out uh, top to bottom, but I do bullet point everything. And just so I've got a guideline of what I want to say or what I want to do, I'm going to apply that to my videos now too and be more concise. So... Um, that will start with the uh, the CNC pickup winder build. If you want to uh, try building a CNC pickup winder yourself and you want to build along, go over to Highline Guitars, it's uh, Chris Monk, and get his uh, plans for the CNC winder. I am not going to make the plans available or uh, go into some of the things that would uh, allow people to just follow what I do and make it because Chris put a lot of work into... Um, putting those plans together and he doesn't charge a lot for them but he should be paid for that so go get those plans and start getting the parts together if you want to build along if you have questions and you're building along i am always more than happy to answer especially when it's something that's in my wheelhouse which is electronics the cnc pickup winder uh those kind of things guitar building uh, has more or less been a new thing to me. I know a lot about guitars, setting them up, making them work, but I've never ever built a guitar from scratch like the GGBO guitar. That was the first one. And I'm going to do more of those, and hopefully I will get to the point where I, I can add something helpful in those. But when it comes to electronics, amp building, uh, doing the pickup winder, those kind of things, I do, that is my wheelhouse, like I say. So 
hopefully you guys will get some value from that. And if you want to build along, um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to see you guys do that. So go over to uh, Highline Guitars, get Chris's plans, um, start looking around for um, uh, the parts you need for that. Um, some of them can be hard to get. Probably the first video about it will be that. So that's pretty much it for this update, except for um, the one thing that um, I did say I was going to do, which is a, a, a studio demo of uh, of the GGBO guitar build, which I was calling the Coach. I don't really like that name. We've given it a new name. Uh, I'm calling it the Pharaoh, and that's thanks to Salem. She, she said, hey, why don't you call it the Pharaoh? And I, I like that name, so it's called the Pharaoh. Um, that studio demo, um, I've done that, and that's a full uh, demo. We got uh, uh, Todd Pretty, our drummer, in, in his new uh, uh, The Drumder Dome, uh, which was his drum cave. Uh, he's worked for the last year building it up so he can actually record in there, and I helped him with some of that. And so these tracks, the drums were uh, the first thing he recorded in The Drumder Dome, and the rest was uh, Salem and I uh, recording things right here uh, in this studio and then I mixed it. I got a mix that I, I like. Um, it's just a little simple instrumental tune, nothing earth shattering, um, but I'm, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I've been filming the video using the ZV uh, E10 and the ZV1 and putting that video together. I've done all the cuts and everything. I know how I, I want it to go together. I hope you guys will like it and um, I hope it's going to look good and concise when it's done. I've really been working on it a lot that's been my project for the last month is to to get better at that so uh, I've got it 90% done I've just got to do final color grading on it and a few scenes I want to change and maybe some some transitions so I'm hoping that that video will be out in the next week I'm, I'm pretty sure it will I hope you all had a great um, uh, holiday season uh, I hope you've had a good start to 2024 and I'm really looking forward to getting back to doing this and, and uh, making things better. I really enjoy doing this. And as I say, it's been pretty good therapy. So until the next video. Oh, one other thing. Uh, we released uh, our most recent album, uh, Slaves to the Sky, Masters to the Mess, on our, our One Soul Thrust YouTube channel free for everybody to stream and listen to. We've now put up our, uh, we did a double EP uh, set in 2016, which was called Hold the Vision, Trust the Process. The first EP was called Hold the Vision. Second one was Trust the Process, and they go together. That is now up for streaming on the uh, One Soul Thrust YouTube page. So I'll link that below and maybe put a card somewhere. Um, so go check that out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. I know I've been scarce the last little bit, and it's been kind of a weird uh, year. Uh, but I really appreciate all of you being here, and uh, until the next video, we'll see you.